Welcome to the Talking About Life podcast. I am your host, Ian Lepkowski. My handle is at K-O-W-S-K-Y underscore E-T-H, as in the first three letters of Ethereum. My E-N-S is Kowski.E. As always, we start the Talking About Life podcast with gratitude to God, energy, source, data, information, love, the universe, whatever you want to call it. If you so do believe there's something higher than yourself, if not, that's okay too. But we do start by giving gratitude to the universe and then also, of course, to our guests because with no guests, there's no show. So we're, we're always grateful to the guests on the show. Today, we're very grateful to have Kate on the show. Her Twitter bio reads, ex-pro basketball player turned engineer, love to learn daily and crack jokes, VF kind warrior and heart trooper. Her Twitter handle is at stretch 4141. So that's at S-T-R-E-T-C-H 4141, stretch 41, Kate. Uh, anything you want to introduce beyond what I've read, please go ahead. But how are you doing today and how are you doing in general? I'm good. I'm really good. Um, I have off tomorrow from work, so that's exciting um, for a good nice. Friday. So it's always nice to have a three-day weekend. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, there's about to be, a, I think, a crazy storm coming through. So I've been hearing that. Too, too bad happens. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it. I've uh, played basketball pretty much my whole life. Um, played in college, played overseas um, for about five years in Spain and Portugal. And then after that, I came home. I was kind of ready to, to be done with that. Came home and, and uh, was able to land an engineering job with a city in my, t in, uh, my state and um, kind of been grinding ever since. And then the last, then I got introduced to V Friends and uh, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a wild ride ever since. Hell yeah. So... Um, do you want to start with V friends or would you rather start talking about just kind of like yourself and like your journey or do you have a preference? Uh, it doesn't matter me to me, whatever you think flows better. Okay, cool. So let me just ask you real quick. Cause V friends, like, I mean, it's, it's just like so hot on the heels. Um, are you going to VCon? Like, are you going to NFT NYC? Do you have any like events planned? Like what, what do you uh, have planned for that? Yeah. So I haven't gone to NFT NYC yet. Um, I was thinking about maybe doing it this year, but I decided I'm I'm not really going to. I haven't. I've heard. I've had like a heard like a mix of things. Like it's good. It's bad. Um, so I'm probably... I had a great time last year, but people are saying it won't be as big this year. So I don't mm -hmm. know if you've never gone. If this is the best first impression, because we're yeah. like, you know, the market's down and all that. So maybe when it picks back up, you know, the events will pick back up. But yeah, I, I think it might not be the worst decision if you uh, avoid NFT NYC. What about Vcon? Oh, for sure, going to that. Have to. Woo! I mean, oh, like, yeah. you just... You got your ticket all uh, booked oh, yeah. up. Well, I just need to get the hotel. I need to get... And did you see that announcement today with the hotel ticket? No. Or what hotel about? key? So, um, if you go and use the V Friends app to get the hotel, when you get to the hotel, you actually end up with a hotel key that has the Viper on it. Oh, wow. That's yeah. dope. That's really cool. Yeah, so no, I didn't cool. see I mean, that. That's, that's little... awesome. A little thing I, I feel like well, Easter egg. like sprinkle little things in there yeah yeah um but yeah you have to go i mean even if you're not like looking forward to listening to other people talk about you know their successes their failures their experience it's just like you never know like what could happen you know it, it's, yeah it's a lot of positive people it's a lot of positive energy a lot of famous people like yeah. a lot of a lot of good connections like yeah i it, i think it's phenomenal i didn't get to go last year so I am I am incredibly excited about this year. Yeah, I'm excited to see like what they take from last year and if they change things up. I mean, I know steps. Like, I don't know if you see on Twitter, like people always joking about the steps, like walking up. Yeah, steps people. <laughs> yep, I I saw that. That was one thing I was like, all right, so may, maybe I missed that. Hopefully next year that one because everyone was complaining. I'm like, Ugh, like <laughs> well, I, don't love, I don't love it. I love that. It's crazy. I don't um, mind walking, but steps is is yeah, different than of, walking. Like it was a lot of that steps. takes a toll. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was crazy, though, because they had, like, the merch drop at the beginning of VCon, and it was... I heard like, there was, like, a stampede for that. Oh, my gosh. I was, like, I was scared <laughs> for people. I immediately right. was, like, this is not me. I'm yeah. okay. I'm okay. Um, but it was crazy, because I think there was, like, some some things that were only, like, 500 or 1,000 of those. It's so like someone were, like, yelled fire in a movie theater, I heard. Yeah. Like. <laughs> it was wild. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to go. I got at least I got my airplane ticket before that price turns into like two thousand dollars or something crazy. Right. 
Yeah, for sure. So I'm excited about that. Um, and you got to go last year, and and you had a great time. Besides, like the steps and all that. Like, oh kinda... yeah, for sure. Yeah, the steps, <laughs> the steps, that that's 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 yeah, that's like the little like eh, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was awesome. I mean, there's literally like people went out and like partied hard. I'm like, I don't know how people did that because the whole day is you like listening to people talk and like trying to engage with people. I like, I don't know how you guys are like out here getting wild at night. Like, maybe I'm That'll an old lady, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, 31, but I'm a I'm a young spirit. I, I it, the the people you know it wakes me up. Like I, I could be tired, but all of a sudden everyone's laughing, joking, smiling, and the night's still going. I you know I could go to the sun rises sometimes. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, guess, I, guess I hope not. I hope not till the sun rises. That's a horrible <laughs> feeling. Honestly, you feel like a vampire if you're up till the sun rises. Somehow, I'm like not. you're like like you, you don't notice. Like you're still there. Like you're you're like finishing your last beer, and there's the sun, and you're like ah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like the only thing, the only thing that's a little bit I haven't seen a lot of like the uh, like the satellite events yet that the community's um, driving. Last year I I did a basketball event um, the day before, but I haven't seen like too much chatter. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Like, that was fun. World of Women did something. And I went to that, um, and that was a lot of fun um, going to that and just like you have one of those, people. or you just went to the event. I, I do have a world of women in FT. Oh, nice. Um I sold so I had I started off with four V friends um at Mint. And nice. I held on I'm holding on to the Kind Warrior and the uh, Heart Trooper just because like I love those characters a lot. Um but I had two other ones. Love those um, too, actually. Nif- Nifty Norwal and uh um Energetic Eel, Electric Eel. And so are I they sold- cores? No, they were very rares. Um, oh nice. But I ended up selling those, and so I was able to kind of like diversify a little right. bit. So I picked up some um, some other DF- NFTs I was interested. That's in. That's great. Yeah, a lot of people didn't, you know, sell, and they were disappointed they didn't sell. So you held some, sold some. So hopefully, would you say you were happy, kind of, with the turnout on that? Oh yeah, for sure. Like it's well, it's so funny to see. Like I mean, I'm not trying to like put any negative energy out there, but um, it's right. just funny to see like people's reactions like right now about V friends. I'm like just like the crazy opportunities that you've been given like if you entered through v friends and like to know like to see where you are now like because of that like how much more knowledge you have and like all the friends you've made and like all the opportunities that kind of gary and his team have presented to you it's it's crazy to me when people are like throwing out negative energy like that just yeah i think i think it's a twofold argument i think one there's the like the value that you get you know, and I guess not everyone gets that. So I guess those people, you know, but I agree, like for the value of me, you know, for me, it is a community. I started a podcast. I got inspired. Like I went to someone else's um, like Twitter spaces, this guy, Afikasi, who's like also in the V friends community. He has a barbershop space. And like, I kind of found my voice in there. And like that, you know, that's why I'm doing my podcast now. Now I'm meeting all these V friends, interviewing people, making connections. And like, you know, some people are like, oh, like how many views? And, you know, it's nice to I get a decent amount of views. But for me, it's like, like the best part of it is just meeting people, like just oh, having yeah. like a one-on-one conversation. Like, like I, they're like, oh, is it going to be successful? I'm like, it's successful every fucking time. I meet a person <laughs> every time. And like, now I have another friend or like another, so, you know, however you see it, but like, you know, another connection in the world who's a V right. friend and my, you know, and I'm like, yeah, fucking it's totally successful. You know, like, <laughs> am I monetizing? Not yet, but like, yeah. So I, I agree with that side of it. Um, And it, yeah, I agree. It's like unfortunate. Not everyone sees that. And then the other side of it for me is like, I do have the empathy to see that if you, you know, felt like Gary somehow convinced you that it was going to never go down and go to the moon. And like, even if a like potential war started happening, a global pandemic and like, you know, market like corruption, like that you thought be friends with, like, you know what I mean? Like, like, I guess I'm saying like people had a chance to sell and like, I don't think you should be mad at Gary V that like the world kind of happened and then you didn't sell and it went down. Like, I don't think he misled you. Like, and I agree, like when people kind of say that or put that on him, I just think it's projection. I think I think they're mad at themselves, obviously, right, that they didn't sell and they're looking for like, whose fault is this? And like, who wants to look in the mirror and go, yeah. ah, it's my fault. I was a little greedy. Like, you know right. what I mean? I probably, I probably could have sold it like a 300x <laughs> going to a 600x profit. And now I'm mad at somebody. And I'm like, I get it emotionally, but like, self you know responsible like maybe like oh you're into v friends maybe like read all through the characters names like some of them are about yeah. self-awareness and like personal responsibility like again no negativity but like yeah 
responsibility. You know what I mean? Like empathy, but also responsibility. Yeah, it so was I, I agree with you on that. Like, yeah, it was tough. Like the because like the first year, like the first nine months, like things were going at like freaking a crazy pace, crazy, right. crazy pace in NFTs. Right. Like everything was like, rocket you to the moon. Like, everything was moving. Everything yeah, like, to the moon. I, I look at my wallet. I'm like, why did I, why did I buy that? I have no idea. But like at right. the time, you were like, everything is gonna go to the moon. Everything. Right. I have, I have like a hundred NFTs. Like you know, <laughs> some of them were cheaper, but it's like now, now you know, some of them were a hundred dollars. Now they're zero. Some of a thousand, zero. Like twelve yeah. cents. It's like what the fuck was I thinking? So I feel like people. I was thinking were like, mood. So, yeah, like people are so <laughs> used to that, and then. And then all of a sudden, like, we've kind of all hit the brakes. So people are just, like, still – I think – I'm not speaking for everybody, but I feel like some people are still expecting, like, all this, like, go, 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 and, like, all this return on your investments. Like, well, right now we're kind of, like, in a lull. But Gary and, and Andy and all of them are still working hard. Like, they're putting – Right. That's my point. It's not like B friends died and the rest of the NFT market soared. Then I get it. Like, dude, Gary, like, you're not keeping up. But it's like, no, he's keeping up. Like, what are you, like, yeah. what are you talking about? Like – like some people don't like be friends. Some people fade it, but it's like, I've been to several in real life events. I've gotten merch from it. Like I've, I've met Gary V more than once from like holding it in the events that I got to go to. Like right. I've personally been able to buy and sell. Cause like I was a little more liquid and moving and I've made money flipping be friends. Like you, you could have bought and sold along the way, you know, like, yeah. so I get when people are sad, but I, I try to make positivity louder. That's what the show is about. Positivity. Passion, oh, absolutely. So. I, you know, it is what it is. You know, yeah. it sucks if you lost a bunch of money or you missed, you know, I get it. It sucks. I'm not saying it doesn't suck. I'm not saying you don't have a right to be sad or frustrated, but I'm saying process that as quickly as you can. Cause like, how long do you want to fucking feel like that? I know. <laughs> you know, some people, many months. And I'm like, uh, try not, you know, I, don't, that, I wish for you to be happier. You know what I mean? It's not like a criticism. Yeah. It's like, you could be happier. I feel like. <laughs> and I yeah, want and, and, and you've been, you've been doing, I've been seeing your videos of um, having a great day. Like, hell yeah. So that's been really cool. You've been doing that consistently for what, like a couple months now? I don't even know. I don't, I lost track of time. I have a new baby. Like I, I'm not sleeping as much as I used to. Like, <laughs> like I don't, I don't know how many days and months are, have passed yeah. other than like her four month birthday is on the 11th. Like, like that's how I keep track of like <laughs> right. time. It's yeah. about her life, not mine. But yeah, I've been, I've been doing it every single day for at least at least a few weeks, maybe a, at least a month. Yeah, like a month or two, a month and a half, something like that about yeah. um, just because, yeah, like I, I just got in, you know, my head, the idea like like force positivity, like like just get it in the morning. Like I started doing uh, a round in my shower. I'm not into fully cold showers yet. I don't know if I can get there, but I do Ooh. a round at the end where I where I, I go super hot to kind of get ready for the cold. But then uh -huh. I end with the cold shower. It kind of wakes me. And I'm like, yeah, like fucking people who are successful do this shit. Like it, it boosts your dopamine. Like, you know, it's like some Tony Robbins, you know, David Goggins, fucking Cristiano Ronaldo shit. And I'm like, maybe I should do some of it. Like <laughs> they go full fucking ice bath. They go fucking ice lakes. I'm like, yeah. Ah, I'm gonna I'm gonna like start smaller. But like I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna start somewhere. So it's like, okay, take a little bit of a cold shower. Wake up and decide every day could be a great fucking day and that you're gonna fucking make it a great day. And like, yeah. you know, God forbid something happens, like obviously like the world happens, but like let that fucking happen and you meet it where it happens. Don't don't start thinking about that and projecting that and maybe that won't like great fucking day and I'm gonna keep going like that and, and that's my mission. Like yeah. Whatever happens, happens, but that's my fucking starting point. That's my drive. I never started like, you know, I used to just start like, all right, here I am. Here's the morning. I, <laughs> I got to go to fucking work. And like, I heard, you know, podcasts, all the shit. I'm into the self-help shit. Cause like, who the fuck doesn't want to help themselves? And it's like, don't say you got to go to work. Say you get to go to work. And I'm like, right. People are getting laid off and shit. And it's oh, yeah, like, for sure. I get to go to work and I don't even hate my job. I kind of do like enjoy my job like 90 plus percent of the time so like yeah it's not so hard for me personally to be like i get to go to work so I, yeah, I something, something like really struck me like a year or so ago um gary had put something out someone was asking him um like, and he like you know how he just like it has a video and he just like inserts himself over it and like talks about it so someone yeah. had asked him like he green screen or like whatever yeah, yeah. yeah so someone had asked um like i i have my real estate job but I'm doing the side hustle on the, I'm doing the side hustle and I'm like super successful in the side hustle. I love it. Like, do you think I should like go ahead and go full all in on the side hustle? And Gary was like, well, maybe 
you're doing so well on this because like you have a stable job like over here right and you have like this little like break from that that makes you happy and like is also successful but like you have like a stable situation going right now like it's okay to have like a little something that like you're passionate about but like you also have the stability over here yes like, oh, it just, that's like, me really, it really like struck me i was like yeah like just finding that like whatever that may be like whether that's nfts or like another hobby like podcast something like that like that that really resonated with me like yes i have this nine to five but if i can find things like little things here and there that like make me feel good then it's not like i'm i'm just in the same boat as you i like 90 percent of the time i love my job right so like maybe that 10 percent of the time i can get i can make it through because I know I have this other little thing that I like doing. So that yes. really like, stuck with me. I like that. Fuck yes. That's, yeah. that's what it is for me. Like, cause I would, I, I would get very anxious. I think like just trying to go full throttle. And I know some people do that and that's the entrepreneurial bullish spirit, but I would fucking crack. I think, you know, like I have a kid, like, you know what I mean? Like, like I have a wife, like I gotta, I gotta feed people and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we gotta, we gotta fucking pay the rent. I, I can't be like, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not 19. Like, I, I can't be like, all right, fuck it. I'll sleep on my mom's couch. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> yeah. if you're there, yeah, maybe go for it. But like, dude, I'm 31. I, I can't do that. Like, you know, so right. My happiness is go to work. Love that I have fucking health care and a fucking consistent paycheck. And that yeah. majority of time I enjoy that. And then do something I'm like passionate about that's creative. So like, you know, I do art. I do the podcast. Like, I like to make like little personal things like this hat. Like, this is yeah. the willful wisdom green so we would look like yoda and i put like use the force on here like <laughs> you know i can't sell these because it's not my ip but i can make one for myself you know what yeah. I mean? like i this is I, I i could find happiness so many places you know i find it sad that like like you know when people are stuck in the perspective where they can't but i love that you literally you're saying all this stuff and like you're talking about you but i'm like yo you're talking about me you know what <laughs> yeah. i mean like we, we're on that vibe of like, yeah, you could totally be fucking happy like this. Yeah. Like I, when I met Gary Vee, he said something to me like, well, I was talking about ambitions and he was like, don't, you know, don't get delusional or whatever. He's like, like some people compare themselves to me or like whatever this and that. He goes, but he's like, dude, like I was selling lemonade and baseball cards at like nine years old or whatever. He's like, you're getting started now at 31. And I go, yo, dude, I totally understand that. Like, but my thing is like, I have a happy and stable life. And like, if I never get to be a millionaire, it doesn't really fucking matter to me. Cause like the same way you're trying to buy the jets, I just want to like live this stable life and try. And that makes me happy as fuck. And he was like, dude, you fucking get it. He's like, I'm so happy to hear that. I was like, yes, I'm happy that you're happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that you're happy. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like a, it was like a, I was like, ah! whatever yeah um, it was like at the wine event but again that's the utility of these things so i'm I know, super, I know, I'm super fucking happy about that um yeah. let me ask you this a little bit about your bio and everything so something you know you i know you switched out of it but just to kind of give the background what what got you passionate about basketball like how young did that start for you um and like why did you like it you know like a parent a friend get you into it or what's that kind of thing? Yeah, so um, my family, like cousins, everybody, like we've all been in, heavily into sports, like growing up, like that was just kind of what everybody did. Um, nice. And my dad would always shoot hoops with me. Um, nice. So I started, did. He let, like, did he let you in, or did you did you beat his ass? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, like I. So I have older parents. So like I'm 36, and both of my parents are over 75. Okay. So like they're so. Like, there was really, I mean, I don't really remember playing one-on-one -on -one with him ever, but, like, as I got older, I probably would have kicked his butt anyway because yeah, he, he was an older dad. <laughs> he would have got him. <laughs> so he was mostly, like, passing passing me balls to shoot. Um, but, yeah, I just, I just liked it a lot, and I was pretty good at it. So that always, like, you know, motivates you when you're actually yes, yes. Or, or, or pretty decent at something. Yeah, like an act, um, yeah. So then it just kept going, and... Um, I was able to just keep going to the next level, next level, next level. And I wasn't even thinking about playing overseas, but my college coach, so I, I played for University of Massachusetts. Um, my college coach, she said, I mean, we can make you like back when you still made like DVDs of things. She's like, I can make like a DVD of like your highlight tape. And yeah. like, she's, like she sent it to people and um, it just got the ball rolling. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, you want to play in Spain? So I was like, sure, of course yeah. I would. Like I was, I'm fortunate enough that I had, you know, parents that I could, that could provide for me, you know, and 
Um, I, I'm always like, I always think how lucky I was that I, I'm able like, cause there's people out there, like you're making life or death decisions, like from a very early age, you know, some people but, are born addicted to crack. Like, you know what I mean? I know that's extreme, but like, that's the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. So like I had the freedom to kind of like do something after college for five years and, and mess around and, and go see the world. Like I'm so fortunate. And, um, those are probably like some of the best times in my life doing that. Um, Fuck yeah. Yeah, so I played in Spain and Portugal, and then after my my fifth year, I was like, you know what? I think I kind of want to head back and and um, just kind of figure out what I want to do next. And I have my engineering degree, so I figured I'd probably look for an engineering job. And <laughs> oh, so you went to school for engineering while doing basketball? Yeah. Got it. I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. So um, I graduated. Because when I read the bio, I was like, how do you just transition from that? <laughs> <laughs> like how do you do no, that? that would like, be I'm like, that's like ass. such an interesting switch. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that did would you be to crazy. show some sort of credentials? Like, what the? Did you did you build something crazy? I'm like, oh, okay. Now I'm oh, you had to right, right. Research. I just got, I was just <laughs> able to to take it on because I did something amazing. No, no, right. no. I, they uh, saw the arch of your shots, and she's like, she's got an engineering mind. That was yeah. very mechanical the way she. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but she does the Absolutely. Run. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a that would have been an awesome story. I wish that would have happened. Um, but yeah, pretty boring. I just. Came in an back. alternate universe, a version of you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, then then I was fortunate to get a job um, with engineering, and it's a great job. It's it's a public job, so I'm like serving the community with um, like designing things and in, in water and wastewater, which seems kind of like kind of silly, but um, it's important. You got to get before before you go fully into the engineering. Let me just ask you, because I've been to Spain also. Like, what what was your experience in Spain? Like, did you enjoy it? Did you do any sightseeing? Like, you have like any like interesting fond memories of uh, Spain? It's just like the funny thing was. So like in the United States, like in college, obviously, like you go out, you have a fun time. Um, like usually like when you go out in the States, well, at least back when I did, like your night would usually start around like nine or 10 o'clock and then you'd come home at like maybe 2 a.m 1 a.m 2 a.m and then like get two three four depends right (laughs) depends on the night (laughs) so like my first my first year over in spain um so they eat dinner super late they eat dinner at like so we had practice and they didn't start making dinner until nine and i'm like what like i'm starving like that's late for me Um, all right and then they have like two hour long meals like everybody over there like the meals are just yeah and I, and I love it it's great like you're just chatting drinking like you know drinking wine eating there's good usually food. wine involved right <laughs> so so like that was like another two hours and then like we were going to go out that night and i'm like waiting around it's like nine or ten o'clock i'm kind of ready and they're like no 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 like we're not going out until midnight and like and then the bar doesn't even shut down until like eight in the morning. I'm like, what that's, is going yeah, on? That's crazy. <laughs> it's like, so that was, that was an adjustment for me, for sure. I was like, what the hell? Like, this is like, I'm already, it's already like, like breakfast the next day and we're still out. So that was a little bit of an adjustment, but like the people over oh, there, man. like, I don't know if this was your experience, but it just, it's just like a different attitude about things. Like Totally, totally different. Like, attitude. They're not like, like grinding out days like trying to you know make as much money as possible at work they have fucking siesta in the middle of the day yeah. it's the greatest fucking I thing i wish we yeah. had that i know in the middle like, of the day, for those who don't down. know in the middle of the day siesta in the middle of the day they take a nap and everything right everything closes down everyone just chills the fuck out for a little yeah. bit and then goes back to what they were doing and that's part of why things are later is because there's a fucking nap time in the middle of the day which yeah. is brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. yeah like kids go home from school sometimes like for a couple of hours um, and then go back Show to school. It's just it's just a different mindset, and I really, I really like that. Like I wish we had more of that over here. Like just appreciating more of the time outside of work, and not like not having your focus on work so much. So I really like that, and then it's just beautiful over there. Like there's so many different landscapes. Like you have the beach, oh, like you have Barcelona, yeah. but then you have like this like like the city center, like Madrid. Um, and then you have like mountains, like up in Northern Spain. So I like, you were able to do and see everything. It, it, I loved it. Do you speak Spanish at all? I was like, I would say while I was over there, I was probably like 70% there. What's yeah. nice is, what, what's Estás nice bilingüe? is, huh? 
I said, "Estás bilingüe." <laughs> no, ahora no, ahora no. Um, but it's it's so nice. Like we're so we take things for granted. But like everybody over there knows like three languages. Right. Like, everyone. Everyone outside everyone the U.S. Has, like, knows Spanish, English. They're, English. Their country's language and like a neighboring country's language. Yeah, and like a bonus language. And I'm right, like, a... <laughs> I'm like, I'm so lazy. Or two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so that was. That was nice. Like mostly everybody spoke spoke English, so it was it was pretty easy to adapt. And and I'm not really like um, I don't get homesick very easily, so right. it, it wasn't that big of an adjustment for me. But where where were you in Spain? Um, I was in Marbella, the Costa del Sol, and then we went around to like lots of different. Uh, we were seeing like historical kind of sites. Um, there was something called like the Alhombra, which was like this. Um, I think it was like this, like the Arabic like nations oh. at the time or Middle East had yeah. like invaded and like built these like beautiful uh, castles. And then like Arabic Middle Eastern culture is very about like symmetry. So there were all these like symmetrical like gardens and tiles and it's very beautiful. Yeah, I think um, I actually went there. It was it was oh, great. It was so nice. And I can't even honestly, I, I, I'm not doing it justice. I forget the names of some of the places we went to. Um, but one of the interesting things, too, when we were down there. Uh, we took uh, a ferry from like the tip of like Gibraltar or something to like Africa and Morocco. It was like a one hour ferry. I was like, what, Spain is like next to Morocco? And I it's know, like, it's, a, it's sort crazy. of. <laughs> yeah. oh, it shows what I know about geography. That was crazy. <laughs> that was a culture shock. Um, but yeah, I, I forget where else we had went. I think we, I think we like landed in Madrid. Like we were there for a little bit. Then we drove uh, to the Marbella. Um, and I've been there a few times, but, and we went to a few different sites, but I forget some of the other names. Alhombra stuck out to me because that was like the nicest one. Um, yeah. but we went to like other like castles, ruins. I think it was to, like a lighthouse or something like that at some point. Yeah. Oh, we went fun. to, one thing we went to, we went to this, I forget where this was, but we went to this like olive factory on like the top of this mountain. It was like the last place that they like actually did like regular, like olives or something. Like they weren't like, um. They weren't like machine processed. There was like a guy like pushing like like a wooden <laughs> pillar or something, or there were or there was like or not that, but it was like water like gen something something like old, and it was like yeah. this like highest quality olive oil. You ever try the olive oil? And like even oh, not yeah. that, even the the machine ones are great. But this was like even better than their fat. This was like the creme de la creme. So that that was fun over there. It's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. It's just like everything just seems so like. People like just so more considerate of like the product they put out and like, um, and just crazy like the churches and stuff over there. Oh my it's god, like, they're beautiful. It's it's cathedrals. It's wild. Gold everywhere. I know gold everything. Everywhere. <laughs> gold, everything. <laughs> gold like Jesus, gold Mary, gold gold doors, gold candlestick holders, like ornaments, like windows, mm -hmm. the stained glass they got there. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. There's there's I can't. It's I, oh, um, Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. Did you go there? Forget. I feel like, yes, we were in Barcelona, but I forget what we were doing. It's like there. a huge cathedral that's, like, really weird. Um, I went to so many things. Like, like, I'm so bad. Like, like, we go with my mom, and my mom is, like, the tour guide. And I'm like, oh, like... I'm just like kind of along for the ride and she's telling me everything the whole time. And she would be, if she listens to this, she'll be so disappointed. And she'll be like, Ian, Ian, come on. You don't remember I told you and I told you this. And I'll be like, I'm sorry, mom. I was like taking pictures and like eating Manchego cheese. <laughs> but we went to many cathedrals. Like I can't tell you definitely yes. Cause my memory is horrible with these things, but Has she, been maybe. Over there a lot? Your mom? she was, she was, um, doing abroad uh when she was when she was in college or like graduated i forget exactly the period but she was over there for years and like she has like a whole family over there because she lived with them for so long and like okay. grew up with their kids and like they stayed in touch forever and they're kind of like this like extended friend of family family that we have so we go over there and visit with them um a lot of the time that we're over there too okay cool but yeah she's fluent in spanish wow nice yeah, yeah. That's an awesome thing to to be able to to have a good a good skill for sure. I'm pretty good at it. I learned it in school, and like it's so funny. Everyone learns it in school. I'm the only person I've ever met that learned Spanish in school, and like it worked. Like, 
<laughs> like yeah. I could still speak Spanish pretty well. But like, to be fair, I also did go to trips to Spain. I went to Mexico. So I had opportunities to go to a country and use it in practice. And that gave me more of like an interest in like keeping it in my memory. Cause I'm like, well, I may travel again and I may like want to use this. And maybe other people think like they just won't use it or something. Um, but now like at my job, like I end up fixing computers and like, I, I end up being able to help people who speak Spanish and it feels great. Cause like, oh, nice. there's not always someone who does. So it's like, Yes, you could use a translate app, but like every everybody prefers it when they get someone who even speaks like half like even if you have to halfway translate, halfway speak, you could tell the difference in the reactions of the people when you're both like typing something in and it's kind of awkward as opposed to like you look up a word or two but you're having a conversation in the native tongue. Like so I, yeah. I, I, I you know, speaking of making positivity, I like to make people feel in included. Like, you know, I used to feel on the outside as a kid growing up. So as an adult like I'm more outgoing. If I could bring other people in who feel like that now, I, I, that makes me happy. So oh, yeah, language sure. is a cool way to do that. For sure. I think like sometimes you have to take like any negative experiences you had in your past and, and help, help, uh, help other people like not have those negative experiences. Be the hero that wasn't there for you. <laughs> yeah, I, for I always sure. say that. Yeah. Um, now let me ask you, cause I know you, I know you, like you were starting to talk about it and I cut you off kind of, so you said you're in, I think water waste management engineering. Did I get that right? Yeah. So basically like, it seems kind of like a silly thing, but you know, people, it seems need to necessary. Get, yeah. People need to get water. Seems to crucial. Room. Doesn't seem yeah. silly. It seems like, <laughs> it seems like I'd have like, it seems like this would be empty without it potentially. So or contaminated yeah. or something. So it seems very crucial. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I basically, um, well, when I started out, I was helping design projects that designed um, getting water to people and also getting wastewater away from people. Um, and now I I manage our um, water production. So basically making sure you, the people in, the, in our area get clean water, um, enough water, make sure we follow all the rules. So there, there's a lot that goes into it, but... Um, it, I'm always busy, so, so I, I definitely appreciate that. So what are you, like, so do you, you have to, like, because I have no idea, you know what I mean, like, the day-to-day of it. So you go in, and are you looking at, like, maps and routes of towns, and it's, like, an underground kind of thing? You have, like, schematic, and you kind of have to think, like, okay, what's the best way to, like, like, it's, like, a main, you know what I mean? Like, am I, am I like, picturing this right, or am I, am I totally? Well, yeah, so, here? yeah, like, when you look at, a, at your street, there's all kinds of things underground, like, as you know, like, there's, and you're seeing you're seeing like you have something either on a computer or printed out like where you could see like yeah i don't know the, have, the you heard, have you heard like of um, gis or geographic information systems so I'm it's not. basically maps of um of your city and you can just see like all the different utilities that are underground where they go what size they are like all the different all the different things about the characteristics of that asset um so for for mostly mostly I'm I'm managing like operational projects and projects that are you know constructing new water water pipe in our in our town um, but then also making sure that the water that we're giving our customers meets all of the standards that are required so I mean that's not really a day to day thing like we have people that go out and, and sample things and, and make sure it's up to snuff um, but yeah I mean and and, and just with everything going on um, recently, I don't know if like if you heard a lot about different water regulations that are are coming. Out. I mean, I could really make this a boring discussion if you wanted. I don't know. I, don't, I wasn't getting bored. What, what's happening with water? Well, I, no. I, don't, so I like to know like, things I don't know. Yeah. So there's just like um, from time to time, the EPA, which is like our federal environmental you know protection agency. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. um, every so often they they say, we want you to find out more about this contaminant. It could potentially be a contaminant. Um, we want we want to know if it's in your water. So they'll whole, have the whole United States, all those utilities sample that water and um, sample their water and report back to the EPA. Like, yes, we have it. No, we don't. And it might become something that we have to make sure that we don't have in our water moving forward. So um, there's just some some things out there right now that the epa is looking into so that keeps me very busy because we have to learn what the heck it is figure out how we're gonna find out if it's in our water all this stuff now have you been hearing about like these train derailments like do you know like like are are you guys talking about that in the industry because i'm thinking like that's gonna end up in the water like there's all these like chemical spills and burns but even if it's a burn like that's going to precipitate, right? It's going to like, is, is this a topic you guys discuss like in the um, industry? Well, so, so I'm like, I feel like probably more, 
more like private industry is probably talking about it a little bit more, but it, it definitely affects us because we're, we serve the public. So we're, I work for a town and I think like the biggest thing that I that took away from that was just communication, like the EPA and, and anybody else that was involved in trying to tell those communities that everything was okay. It seemed like they weren't really like straightforward about what the issue was. Right. And, I felt the same way. And kind of like, kind of tiptoeing around things. And I, and it was from, more about like managing panic than like telling people the truth because yeah. maybe the truth might make some people panic, but it also maybe would have helped people be more prepared and maybe they wouldn't panic. Yeah. And, and that's like, just in my experience, like being truthful and upfront to people like, Hey, this might be an issue or yes, this is going on. These are the ways that you can make sure it, nothing bad happens to you. And we're doing everything we can to fix it. Like, People, I think we need to give people like more credit. Like, right. If you if you tell someone the truth, then they at least know that you're not trying to hide anything from them, and they can have confidence in you, even if it's not the best news in the world. So that's kind of like was my takeaway from that. Like, if someone calls us and says, "Hey, what, is this in my water?" and if I mean, it, it usually is definitely not. Um, but if it worked, if it were to be, I would say, yes, it's in your water and this is what you can do. And this is what we're doing to make sure um, we remove it. You know, it's it just, um, that was kind of my takeaway from that. Like people were freaking out because they had no idea what was going yeah, on. They, they were uninformed. They were misinformed. It was kind of yeah. not like a lot of coverage. I didn't think, you know, so yeah, I agree. Yeah. It took, it took the people around in that town and surrounding towns to get, to get the news coverage. Like, I don't think there would have been until people actually started like yelling about it. Right. Social media. And then it blew up and then it was like, it had to be addressed, but they were hoping it would just slip by. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Horrible. Um, yeah. Yeah. So those are, those are crazy events. And I think that like three more events happened after that around. I saw a lot of different events. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know if they were all trained around, but right. There's a lot of these other events where there's like something with like a boat or another spill. And it's like, yeah, like I keep seeing like, the fuck is going on like things are yeah. getting like crazy polluted out of like nowhere like what's happening i mean one of the things that you can like take away from that like people uh water water utilities or, or places that are producing water and giving it to customers they're not just like siphoning water out of a lake and giving it to customers like there's still treatment that happens like right so even though like it is bad and there may they may not have like a treatment in place for whatever contaminated the water like they're not just like getting a bucket and like pulling it out of the right water. right like we're, we're fortunate in that case in the united states um so it that's always like one, be one thing like it's not yeah, just nowhere. coming straight from the lake <laughs> let me ask you um what is like your favorite part because you said like you mostly enjoy what you do what's your like favorite part of it or what's the most rewarding aspect or you know where does the positivity come from so like well my personality i definitely i like to be organized and i like to like get things done like that's just the way i am so i think like one thing that's rewarding to me is like being able to replace older things that are in that are in the ground with newer things update and, the um, world huh some people update their phones you're updating the world <laughs> yeah yeah i guess yeah look my town totally um like Your just, job's part of the fucking world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very true. Good point, good point. Big thing, uh, baby. <laughs> yeah. So, like, just being able to get rid of things that aren't working well or are, need replacement and being able to replace those things, like, that's something that, like, makes me feel like I'm, I'm doing something. And, like, what I like about these types of jobs, like public service, is, like, you immediately see the effects of what you're doing. Like, I know every day, like, we're affecting people because they're drinking our water or are using our water to shower with or whatever. So like, I see that immediate response to what we're doing. So that, that makes that like is fulfilling to me. Yeah, no, I would agree. Yeah. Like I, I worked, um, you know, in the insurance industry for a while before I decided I, you know, I got to kind of embrace my tech side. Um, and I like, didn't understand, like, you know, I was like, all right. So like, you know, you never saw the result of it. Like, you, you would file, like, something for, like, a company. You know, it was, like, corporate insurance consulting. They would come out with some new policy. I would get the policy filed. We'd get it approved in, like, 39 states. And then my life would go on. Like, I don't I don't know. Did people – was that good for people? Did that – I don't even know what it did. Like, did it help yeah. people make money? Like, 
I could have read through every word, but like that, that's not what we're billing the hours for. My, I'm just there to make sure it passes and make, make sure the things that need to be in regulation are in regulation. Someone else's job was to do the other thing. You know what I mean? So it's like, and I, and I just couldn't do it. It was like in an office and I was just filing reports about filed reports about reports that we had filed. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. what the fuck am I doing with my life? You know? And, and, and that was so distasteful that even though I was trying to do like my own kind of creative thing, like you said before, and like balance it, I was like, I hate most of my life because I'm at work most of my life and I'm at this desk and it's like, what the, f- it's, I'm in like a nightmare. Like, what is this? Like, yeah. like I'm not making enough money and free, like, like I had more money, like, like I, at, now I'm actually doing, I think better than. Now I'm doing better than I was doing there. But at the time I had like left where I was to make more money there. And I was like, I would, I would fucking be homeless instead of it. Like not literally, yeah. but I was like, this is horrible. Yeah. Um, so I, I think work-life balance is totally great. And I agree that like, where I think it's awesome where we have that in common that like what, what we value is you doing something, feeling important, making a difference. Like, you know, I, I fix computers like, you know, no one's going to get contaminated water. You know, like, I think what you're doing sounds even more important. So that's fucking awesome. You know what I mean? That that's your vibe. Like, I've always wanted to do something even more important, but it's like, but I have to be honest about what I'm into. And it's like, I wish I could solve world hunger, but like, I'm not into that. Like, yeah. like, oh, I'm, like, oh, I'm not the best person. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. Like, you know what I mean? But I'm, but I'm being honest. I'm more into technology and electronics. So every day I help people fix things that they need to run a business or like talk to their grandson or their wife or what, or something of medical, you know, whatever, like everyone yeah. needs their fucking computer and their phone. Yeah. So that's, that's where I get it too. But, but you know, it's a result. It's a result I can see every day. I see people laugh. I see people cry. I see people, you know, they thought something was gone forever. And I'm like, bam, here's your fucking wedding photo. And they're like, ah! like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like some people want to hug you. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. It's great. <laughs> You know, so it's like, you know, I like like now I've been back where I was long enough and I'm more skilled and I kind of like moved up and like the roles what I was doing. So it's like now I actually am like making like a money amount of money. I'm happy with doing it. But I was willing when I went back to, to go lower again and work my way back up again, because like, you know, I, it, and that was good. That was clarity. I realized I enjoy I enjoy life more than this extra money. Yeah. Well, and I think now, I have the extra, now I have both. Well, I think, too, like, just you on, like, it might seem like a small thing, but you on Twitter every day, like, trying to bring positivity all the time with everything you contribute to or write about or tweet about, whatever. Like, that's super important. Like, in the grand scheme of things, like, being that's, happy. That's where I try to get the more. That's, that's like, like, because that's why I say I'm 90%, but there's 10% of me that's like, I have to do more. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then that's where it is. The podcast, putting positive tweets out, making reels, and just trying to, like, get people to realize life could be better. And like, you know, I think, you know, I'm not, I'm not someone who's had the hardest life in the world, but I'm someone who's not like had no difficulties. Like my parents got divorced when I was three. I was like, you know, very quickly by, by age seven, I, my mom found me on a balcony. I was thinking, I was like going to commit suicide. I was, and she like pulled me off. Like I got into drugs. I had an eating like problems. I got like very overweight. Then I like stopped eating entirely because I was upset about my self image because I was overweight. So I lost weight, but I did it by just like stopping eating. Um, I was cutting myself. So it's like, bro, like I know there's people who have even worse lives than that. But like, if I'm telling you that's where I started and I'm fucking good, bro, you could be good. Like a lot of people have better like beginnings than even I had. So it's like, Okay, maybe someone who has like who was born addicted to crack. I don't know if I could inspire you. You have an even worse life. You may be like, dude, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't. But yeah. like people who are just like, oh, like you know, I didn't get the promotion I wanted. I'm like, have you ever like fucking stolen money from the people closest to you to get the next fucking hit of drugs? No. Well, I did. It. You could you could probably try a little harder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, shoot, like. That's that's an incredible journey you went on, and to be able to like be where you are now, <laughs> it's it's awesome. I'm just switching locations because I'm uh, I got to plug in uh, here, so I wouldn't lose battery. But yeah, so that's so, so that's why I do all yeah. this. Stuff. Thank you for noticing, like you know, I know people do, but yeah, I I do it. You know, I do it because it makes me feel good. Sometimes I'll go back and fucking read my own shit. You know, like <laughs> yeah. like. Not, now I'm like one of these people that post that. It's funny, like, I posted something the other day that I forgot was a joke, and I was, like, watching it, and I was, like, serious in the beginning, and I fucking got myself, and then I went into a joke in the middle, and I was like, oh, my fucking God, I, for- I forgot I said that here. 
you know, or sometimes I'll like scroll back in my tweets and I'll be like, I'll be like in a bad mood and I'll read it. And I'm like, I, I fucking wrote this. Like, <laughs> huh. That must've been me in a better mood on a different day. I'm like, maybe I should be that me. Like, yeah. like, you know what I mean? It reminds me that I can be that me. So in addition to like Gary inspiring me and like Tony Robbins and like Grant Cardone and like whoever else, like, I, I'm inspiring me, and I'm hoping I do the same for other people. I want to fucking give back to the community. I don't want other people to ever feel all the things that I felt or have eating problems or cutting themselves or fucking be, you know, blowing Oxycontins and stuff. So it's like, yeah. you know, make fucking positivity louder. I love that shit. That's why I like, you know, kind of bringing it full circle. That's why I like Gary Vee. That's why I like Vee Friends because – you know, I, I do want to be successful, entrepreneurial. I like money. I like to, like, be able to eat what I want to eat. I'm not a guy who needs a yacht, but I do like fucking sushi, and it's not super cheap. So I, I got to, like, have some money. Right. I got to have some money for sushi. So, but Gary V is both. He's super into, like, promoting yourself, and he's super into helping other people. It's funny. I, I, I <laughs> people didn't like when I asked this, but I, I said something about, like, can you be, like, an empathetic, like, narcissist? And I kind of almost had Gary V in mind because I'm like, He's almost like a narcissist, but he's empathetic. People are like, no, you're like blowing narcissist. And I'm like, okay, okay, maybe I shouldn't have said that. People are like pulling the DSM-5 like statistic, like psychological manual for narcissism, like messaging it to me. They're like, dude, how could you say this about Gary? I'm like, I wasn't, it wasn't a criticism. Like, yeah. it's just like something else he says and acknowledges is that he pulls from opposite kind of dual natures in two sides. And, and I'm just like acknowledging it, like, like, you can be self-serving and selfless to some degree, yeah. even though it sounds like a paradox. And like, okay, maybe the empathetic narcissist wasn't the best coining of the term, but but it's something, you know. Like, you get what I'm oh, saying? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Like, and I think, and I think you hear it all the time. Like, not even from Gary. Like, if you can't, if you can't, like, love yourself and put yourself first and make sure you're okay. Like, how are you ever gonna like spread that to other people if you can't even like? stand on a strong foundation and, and know right. that you got you you know what i mean like right when people say like they they shame being like selfish i say how the fuck am i gonna fill your cup if mine don't fucking runneth over you know what i'm yeah. saying like yeah. where the fuck am i getting the juice bro my cup's fucking empty and what the fuck am i filling yours with bro or if i get right. a drop in mine and i'm fucking starving i'm gonna fucking pass out walking it over to you dude i gotta get i gotta get some for me and then I can help you. I got to run this motherfucker over. Got to overflow this thing. And then I can fill yours, dude. So, yeah. and Gary gets that. And not everybody does. And some are, some communities I've tried to join or like events I've went to with speakers. Like I've gone to things where Gary spoke and other people spoke and tried to kind of like network. And people were like a little too sharky for me. People were like, 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 so I, so I, I did the corporate insurance thing. I also did like, um, like uh, car insurance. Like, people felt like the people met in the car insurance industry. Everyone's, like, a little bit like, hey, how you doing? My name's so-and-so. Have, have you thought about your car insurance? Everybody yeah. doesn't think about death. I know it's horrible to think about death, but life insurance is – and I'm like, oh, man, like, this is not – like, I don't know. Like, it, that's not what I was there for. I want to know – like you said, like, we're talking about be friends. We're talking about fucking going to Spain. We're talking about childhood lessons, like, shooting fucking hoops with your dad. And I would try to push that, but – like, maybe I just fucking met the, <laughs> maybe I approached the wrong fucking people, you know, the responsibility there. But I went to a few things and I, I wasn't, it wasn't hitting for me. The second I started going to V-Friend stuff, I was like, this is my fucking, like, tribe. Like, this, yeah. that's where I felt like, oh, we could talk somewhat about, hey, this is what I do. This is my business. And how are you, dude? What's, right. what are, like, how, what do you do in your free time? Right. And I'm like, yes, balance. So. I, I think we both find that in the uh, in the V friends. Yeah, and like I feel like sometimes too, like when you're just like talking to people, like regular talk, just shooting the shit, and like just having a good conversation, like really awesome things could come out of that, like just by like relaxing, listening to one another, like and just just talking about who knows what, like I think that can spur like something really creative and really cool, like. Which you know is it can be important with NFTs and if you're trying to be successful there, and and also like if you are trying to be successful in that, just having that, I really want to know about you attitude. Um, people will that will resonate with people, and yes, it's like a magnet, and like people are like okay, you're not just like full of shit. You're not just trying to take like ten ETH from me. You're you're, you're not just pitching me. Yeah, 
So it's it's just important to always have that, like in any any relationship you have, like it's not like business relationship or or what have you. Like it should never just be all about business all the time. Or, you know, no one's going to ever want to share anything with you, and, and those little yes. moments are, are important. Yeah. So that that was that was what I you know didn't like about some of the things I went to, and then B yeah. friends fucking answered that um, <laughs> yeah. just just so solidly. Um, let me ask you this too. What are, what are things you enjoy doing? Like in your free time, since we are on the topic, like, do you still like, do you do like pickup games? Like, are you still in the basketball? Like, um, like for fun or what, what do you do now? Yeah. So I, I, I haven't actually, the last time I played pickup was at VCon last year. Um, I'd like to, oh, I'd like nice. to do more of that. Um, trying to, I, I, I work out, I work out, um, probably three to four times a week. And uh, I just like doing stuff around the house. Like right now, the the weather's you know is turning into spring, so I, I like being outside and like doing stuff like with like landscape like landscape stuff. You know, do all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm married, so doing stuff with my wife. We have a dog, so dogs are like you know just I like a kid. Dogs. So I love dogs. <laughs> and our dog is just a mess. You know, she we. Uh, we adopted her from a shelter and what kind of what do you have a big dog small dog like she's a small dog and... she's a small ah, she's, like, my favorite. I love the she's like part well like she's she's beefy though because she's part part pit bull um so she's got like the pit bull chest um and then what but, else? She has, but she's like a mutt so she has like different like terrier in her them, right? like husky i don't know where the hell that came from because she's a little dog <laughs> She's gotten like uh, like golden retriever in her, and like I said, she's a little dog. She has yeah, I was gonna say it's funny. The pit took so, over. Um, the but short she's life. just like a mess. She's a mess. She's got like knee issues and all this stuff. But we love her, and uh, so she she occupies a lot of our time for sure. Do you have Do you have pets? No, we wanted pets, but like when we were talking about pets, all of a sudden we were pregnant, and we were like, this is gonna be a lot at once. <laughs> um so we were like all right let's let's like table the pet con- like we want pets we still want pets but we were like let's table this for now until we like can successfully parent without like freaking the fuck out you know all the time about like whoa, whoa this thing this thing this you know what i mean like let's yeah. get settled and then so we're still thinking about pets but yeah we had to we had to table that <laughs> we had to put that on the shelf you, like your your daughter will grow up maybe potentially with a with a yes. cat or dog or something yeah, yeah. that'll be cute I, my wife i think we're gonna go probably dog first um, I love cats and dogs. In college, we had two cats, me me and my roommates. And then um, my friend who lives in the city, like, you know, someone had to keep the cats. So we, like, he, he we decided, you know, we came to a decision. He has the cats. But I still get to see them. You know what I mean? Like, I see him. I'm, I'm in Long Island. He's in New York City. So it's like, you know, I still visit him and stuff. And I get... I get to see the cats. I can visit him and his daughter and stuff. So that that's fun, too. I, I love animals. Like, we I, had... I love, uh, love cats and dogs and anything. And... In college, we had uh, we had a house dog too. So we got we were lucky enough. There were like some newer dorms that were were built like our sophomore or junior year, and uh, we a bunch of athletes like we roomed together, and we had like our little dog. And I was like, this dog has been through it. Like who knows how much like accidental alcohol she drank. <laughs> like who knows what like we were like we were good parents to this dog, but like. Who knows what the hell she consumed? Yeah, every once in a while she might have got this. Like we weren't supposed to have pets there, and like the fire alarm would go off. Like we had to leave her there. Like poor puppy. Right. And like one time our RA knocked on the door. It was just me and the dog at home, and like there was poop on the ground. So because she just like she was a small dog, so she would just like have like her little space to poop in like one of our bathrooms. So I had to like pick up the poop like in my hand and throw it in a trash can. It was crazy. You, you didn't want to be like, look, I know this sounds crazy, but I, I shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's I like the other route, right? That. Like, all right, I got to I gotta fucking own this. The, the <laughs> RA is going to feel awkward. They're not going to know what yeah. to say. It's gonna, They're going to think about it later that it was strange. It's going to be hard to question in the moment, though, and it'll get them out of there. <laughs> yeah. Let's, I, I'm, I feel good. Like, uh, what's... Oh, yeah, they would have they immediately <laughs> I'm playing the bluff. <laughs> yeah. like, okay, you need to handle that. I'm gonna maybe go. Put, maybe put a little on your hands. I'm so sorry. I'm literally. I, <laughs> I don't even know what. To, I don't want to leave the door not answer, but I shit myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm studying for an exam. I can't get up from this chair, so I just had to poop. Look, we're not drinking in here now, but I did last night. My stomach's all fucked up. I'm not breaking the rules. But I shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
That would have worked. I would maybe try that. I, I fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always down for the Hail Mary. I'm like, they're yeah. like, this, this, like, we could try this. I'm like, is there some sort of, like, left field type option? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's my, that's my choice number one is choice number six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something further down on the, uh, on the spectrum there. <laughs> So, uh, so do you do? Um, have you been to other? You said you didn't do NFP NYC. Do you have you been to other NFP events or like? Because like World of Women has a bunch of events, right? Like, did you go to Florida or anything? I think that a thing or what other? Um, no, I've been. What I've mostly just been. Um, mostly just been doing VCon. How about you? Have you done other, other I, ones? I so the reason I'm even going to VCon. I was going to say yeah. It's last year's NFP NYC to the extent where like I bought my VF one coming home on the train from. Uh, NFP NYC just ripped 10 and a half ETH on the fucking Long Island Metro. <laughs> like, What'd you get? I got a very rare reflective rhino. Oh, I, nice. I like the character. I was talking to like Rips. He was like, try to go for like, you know, as high as you could go. Epic was like a little like out of my reach at the time. Now I could, you could get fucking a spec for 10 and a half, but you can't, it's I, crazy. I, I can't be thinking like that, but yeah, I don't know. I thought rhino was, you know, there was some I didn't like, Rhino was sitting there, and I'm like, I like fucking rhinos, bro. They got thick skin. I've always seen myself as like, you know, I'm in New York. I'm a thick skin fucking dude. You know, I've been through yeah. some shit, bro. Like, rhinos are fucking dope. So I was like, fuck yeah, fucking. And it's reflective. And I'm like, you know, I'm into philosophy. I'm a fucking podcast, you know, talk show host. I'm obviously a reflective dude. I was like, it, it, it just felt right in that moment. Yeah. I had a friend who had a reflective rhino. I thought theirs was cool. I was like, I kind of want a reflective rhino. You know what I mean? Like, it just, it yeah. just hit. So that's the one I went it's- for. So is that is that um do you have any other um nfts in vfriend land that's my only vf1 and then i went a little crazy and bought 30 vf2s that i also have <laughs> i know i know and i'm like why didn't i buy another vf1 but here you know it is what it is what it is we make the decisions we, why because because i kept going to like i kept getting like all these access things where like like, you would go to meet him, like, the wine thing, the sneaker thing. Like, there was a thing oh, where I yeah. went to Macy's. Like, I live in New York, and he's, like, like his business is centered in New York. So, like, he tends to do more, you know, New Jersey, New York. There's, like, been some things. So, it was, like, I was, like, okay, the way I'm playing it, I have 30 fucking chance to see him or something. Like, you know, maybe some of them won't be that. But I'm, like, okay, let's do it that way. So, like, you know, it slowed down a little bit, the IRL shit. But I'm not mad at the decision. I, yeah, I don't. I don't get, like. You can't get into that. You can't get mad at yourself. Like, I forgive myself. I love yeah. you, bro. So if I'm the one who fucked me over, like, dude, what the fuck? But also, I forgive myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, bro? Like, I don't, you know, I, I put everything on myself, and I get, like, a little mad when I fuck up. But, like, not me. What are we, what are we going to do? We got we to get out of this together. If you're, you, you're, you're, if, you know, we're me. <laughs> if, burn, if that Burn Island, if there was ever an opportunity for Burn Island to actually burn VF2s, Right, I would, would be in a good spot to. Maybe would you it depends to? what the burn is for. I yeah. like, like, I don't want to do a burn where I burn for a maybe. I like the one where like it was an auction and you put up like a certain number, and if you win, you you have to burn that number. But the people who didn't win didn't burn. That like would get me like so. That's definitely a style he's done. So that could get me in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Like I'm also with um, Vayner Sports Pass, and I have one of those. Yeah, like, and when they did those burns, like, if you put in X amount of, of like, they were gone. Um, some right? of their, some of their, like, collab stuff, you lost it. Like, that was right, right. It. Whether so, you won or not, right? Yeah, I, I, I get it, but I, I'm like, ah, I'm just gonna keep my thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's fucking risky. This is a little expensive. Like, you know, th- I, I could get access. Something else good could happen with this, yeah. you know. And if the burns are popular, and let's say this last fucking ten years, like. Like, okay, well, who's going to still have, like, their fucking shit by then? You know what I mean? So, like, the longer you could say, I don't care about the burns and not get, you know, interested in the initial hype. Like, if you have shit in 10 years, bro, people are going to be out by them. People are going to have, you know, the the average person, right? Like, statistically, they'll have just gotten excited at some point before then and be out. Then he announces something crazy, and he's like, but it's fucking 10 VF2. And I'm like, I still have fucking (laughs) 20 years. Right. Like, I'm like, holy shit. Like, you know? (laughs) Yeah. So... You know, that's kind of what I'm playing it on. Now, I just want to – I'm just looking here. I, I do try to keep it about an hour for a uh, yeah. consistent format. We have, like, a few minutes. I go a little over sometimes. Um, do you have any kind of last words to wrap up? And then I do, like, a kind of, like, outro thing, like the intro thing. So I'll, I'll move on to that. But, you know, mic drop, last words, speak to the audience, whatever, you know, whatever you kind of want to say. Um, 
yeah, and I'm not really promoting anything, but I'd love right, to right, connect right. with more people. Um, my, my goal for VCon this year is to definitely try to be a little bit more outgoing um, with people and, and, and try to interact with more people just to get, like, you know, get my face out there so people can, like, recognize me a little bit more. Um, and, and one thing, I, I'm going to say it, I want to say it out loud here to hold myself accountable. Manifest, I've been hell on, yeah. I've been working on um, getting some some comedy stuff together. And it's kind of been comedy. like, it's kind of been like a slow burn for me so far. Um, like I have a ton of stuff written down, but I'm hoping by, by VCon, I will have something like a set almost prepared. And then yes. you never know, maybe I could try something out there, like in a small, like breakout with, with you know, like, love it with something. I like, hope I'm, I'm there. Trying to hold myself I hope the stars align. I will just if 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 God allow it and it be in our greatest good, let me let me be there for that moment. You Appreciate know, I would it. love that. Yeah, and yeah, if yeah. you want to send me, you want to do a little recording, you want to put it on YouTube, you you can, you can't. But if it would help you, I love comedy. I love watching shit. I would watch it totally. So okay. if, if that helps, it's it's there. If not, fuck it. <laughs> yeah well and i'm and i'm totally i'm excited to see you in person at vcon like i oh, really yeah. appreciate um you having me on and just getting my like sea legs with doing something like this so oh, i really yeah. appreciate the time <laughs> my pleasure so i'll we'll close out close out on that i'm gonna throw that thank you right back to you we lead uh, out the way we lead in with gratitude it's all about making positivity louder it's about passion it's about happiness it's about overcoming obstacles so you know Thank you for echoing all of the concepts that I talk about on the show. Every episode, people ask, you know, what's your show about? I say, whatever the fuck you want, as long as it's not negative. You know, basically, <laughs> like, I don't, I, I, I'm super inclusive. Like, you know, I, you, you can see, I, I had to get up and charge my thing in the middle. I like that, though. I want to keep it raw. I want to keep it authentic. I don't want to be too propped up in position because I want everybody to know that you could fucking start tomorrow if you have, like, a fucking smartphone, you know? So that's part of the reason I don't sometimes, like, because I have a fucking tripod. And I thought, should I set up my tripod? And I thought, nah, fuck it, yo. Like, some people <laughs> don't have that. I'm going to just keep it raw. Maybe one day it blows up and it's like, okay, I'm ready to up the standards. But in the beginning, people are going to see how, like, you could just fucking do it. You could put your fucking phone on. You could you could put the video on. Download the fucking Riverside app. Hit record. There's not even a cost for it. And get fucking started. So thank you for echoing that message. You know, you, you embrace your passions right from the get-go. You grew up, your family, you know, was into sports and athletic, and you said, hey, I fucking vibe with this. I fit in with my family. I'm having a good time, you know, bonding and, you know, having exercise and doing a sport that's like hand-eye coordination, all that, you know, builds character. You fucking got to the, like, level of excellence where they were like, yo, go play in fucking Spain and Portugal, fucking España, okay. all that shit, hola, hola, you know what I'm saying? But, um, <laughs> so fuck yeah on that. And, you know, it's just you're another person who you, you wanted something, you went after it. Then then you felt fulfillment in that or felt like a period of, like, something's next. And then you moved to, you know, what you went to school for and you were ready to go to next. And I think you're a great positive example. You know, another beautiful episode of the show. I'm very lucky to have guests. Every guest I've enjoyed so far, I believe it'll happen every time. I, I manifest that. Um, so thank you 100% for coming on. Again, thank God, energy, the universe. If you believe or don't, that's okay. There's no judgment. I believe there's something greater than us. And I always give thanks to that energy and magic that brings us together fucking across oceans, seas, roads, real time, looking at each other's fucking faces on these fucking screens that like, if you're looking from outer space, it just looks like I'm staring at my hand. But no, we're having a fucking conversation <laughs> and we're connecting and it's magic and it's God and it's technology and it's life. Um, also thank the audience, everybody listening. Obviously, I appreciate all the listeners that tune into the show, Apple, uh, podcast, Spotify, um, anchor, and then on YouTube, we're also doing obviously the video ones. So check me out. Thank you very much for listening. And then the last message reference back to that guy I was talking about for Afikasi brand, a message he always closes out with that I decided to like, kind of take as like a disciple from him. He goes, if you haven't heard it today, you are loved. I always say there's light and dark in the universe, but if you believe in oneness, like I said, one of the names for it could be love. And not only are you loved, but you know, you are, you know, a part of the universe and the stars. And if the universe has a force of love within it, then you, you embody that love. If you like love uh, yourself and channel love and others, you are love incarnate. You are love yourself. You are love. So not only are you loved, you are love. Um, but that's it. If you haven't heard it today, you are love.